by the fact that you came to the exhibition in this weather. <laughs> you can ask my husband. I was bitching and convincing <laughs> all the way down here because I said nobody's going to come. The weather is awful. I, I lost my faith for a moment, Monsignor. <laughs> <laughs> but my husband, as he always is, was so tremendously supportive in the moment. And as a matter of fact, it is that terrific support that I have to thank him for throughout this journey to the exhibit that you see here today. It is because he freed my mind up. I thank Peter Jeffrey Fox. And I don't want to thank Peter first, really. I need to thank God for the inspiration and the gift. And I always start everything with a prayer. Hence, we had to have the Monsignor here. I don't know. What are you doing here? I don't, I don't know what stories he's telling about me. Probably it is old age. But I've forgotten these stories. But uh, just to uh, co co go on for a moment, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors who came out today in support, also in the bad weather, and the sponsors were Ammon Beach Resort and Hanshel Innes, who have sponsored in a big way all of the wonderful cheeses and wines that we are drinking here tonight and enjoying. And I'd like to thank Nikita and her staff for coming out at the last moment and really putting on a good spread. Thank you again. <laughs> I'd like to also thank Indrani and Hazelan. When Indrani and Hazelan invited me to do this show in February, I think it was, or March, I said, how do you expect me to produce 40 pages <laughs> in six months, you know? But in Indrani, as usual, push, push, push. <laughs> well, you can do it, you can do it, you know. And I guess I did it. So thank you for the opportunity. I really do. And thanks to all the girls in my classes who are here, who came to support me this afternoon. And uh, it just is a wonderful feeling and a humbling one to know that uh, you have appreciated the work that I took the time to do. It's really a lot of fun, and you should all try it sometime. That Carol has been an iconic figure in this island as it relates to the design of art is well known to us. But the extent to which she has chosen to represent those aspects of her creativity, I'm sure, is a surprise to all of us who today see the range of where she is prepared to go in terms of her art and her creativity. Creativity cannot be conferred upon anyone. It is said by Eric Williams in the third chapter of his autobiography that some men are born great, some men have greatness stressed upon them, and some become great. But in the case of Carol, creativity like with other geniuses, has to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike great. And that innate creativity, however, sometimes does not find expression to the outer world. And it is a testimony to one's sense of discipline as well as one's sense of perspective that creativity can be appreciated by others. Because many a person and it is said that there's a very thin line between genius and madness. <laughs> <laughs> but many a person, and quite seriously, many people are unable to be able to articulate that creativity in a manner that allows them to be free as a person and equally allows an audience to appreciate it. 
And many of the people who we may look at and then throw history as being eccentric are very often persons in whom the fight of creativity rests with itself and the inability to allow that creativity to find expression, either because of societal, family, or other circumstances, <coughs> religious. Those persons, unfortunately, are tortured. That you have been able to find that outlet in a way that each and every one of us can appreciate it is a testimony to your ability not just to be able to dare to dream, but to be determined to do. And that is where I reflect now. <laughs> the people of Barbados who are not art lovers might use a metaphor that this body of work is to Barbados what Gabby and Plastic Bag's body of work is to music and what Camo's work is to literature. And I say that because it is effectively first and foremost a sociocultural history of this country. Whether it is in the influence of Kathleen Hawkins, who, yes, I did not know at Queen's College, but of whom I did, or Christmas morning at Queen's Park, or Cave Shepherd in the days before it became a landlord for boutiques, <laughs> or um, the bathhouse at Hastings, which I never saw, or the travel houses, or the events of more recent vintage like the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. And may I say the housing the nation painting is perhaps one that we may want to share, or the media may want to share with the developers at Coverley to show how <laughs> you can place houses close to one another <laughs> quickly without taking the eye of the population. <laughs> but quite seriously, it is first and foremost a reflection of the sociocultural history of this country. But more importantly, while anchored in Barbados, it expresses itself to the rest of the world. And it does so by your interpretations of London, whether it is the liberty straight ahead and the mixed media that you use to express that, whether it is the Soho, Soho in New York, whether it is Marseille in France. The point is that you show that being of an island does not limit you to an island. And that is perhaps the most important message that we can send to our people today who regrettably feel that the sun still rises and sets on this country as if we were only an island and nothing more. This is an anchor and a root for us. But if we begin to believe that we can learn nothing from the outside world or that we have no voice or perspective to share with the outside world, then our future will be no different from those families who regrettably have found themselves on an incestuous route to the development of their offspring. The truth is that it is that ability to be anchored in Barbadian tradition, but to pursue global excellence that will define us as we move forward as a nation and as a people. Yeah. And you, Karen, have exhibited it best, not just in the discipline of oil, not just in the discipline of mixed media, not just in the discipline of your wearable art, all of us have been able to benefit from over the years, which remains still classic today. But quite frankly, I have always felt, and yesterday I had the opportunity to address the Institute of Chartered Accounts of Barbados, Convent of Barbados, on the issue of the new economy, and talk for the sake of talk, on the development of the cultural industries and the sporting industries yet again. And one of the things that struck me, as I said then, that if we are not capable of creating the fiscal space to provide the institutional support for the cultural and sporting industries, as we do for tourism, as we do for international business, as we have done in the early years of independence, agriculture, and manufacturing, then you cannot realistically expect to have the kind of impact on our national economy and our national creative effort 
that you would otherwise expect. Most of our artists do not have the capital base from which to involve themselves in marketing and promotion. And if the banks ask the owner, and I'm not looking at you for any reason, if the banks still continue to ask the primary earners of our wealth in tourism for levels of collateral which are easier to give in the form of hotels and villas, then pray tell what will they ask of our artists and sportsmen. The truth is that we have not yet appropriately understood how to value the art world and the images within the sporting world, even though the concept of copyright and royalties are well known to us through our legislation. Part of the difficulty genuinely is lack of skill. And unless we are in a position to be able to develop that skill through the region as a whole, as a unit, as well as the diaspora, which is still our greatest market for the sale of all of our product and output, then we will not be able to transition the art from an object of philanthropy to a point of earning and wealth creation for our people and for our country. So I look forward, from wherever I stand, to being able to help in that transition. I regret that almost 20 years later, the National Art Gallery, the collection of which has existed now for about 15 years, um, has not yet physically been given expression to. But I trust and hope that if I follow the words of the Bible, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen, that one day we may be able to move from walking by faith to walking by sight and respect to the expression of the National Art Gallery. And when that day comes, I truly anticipate, Carol, that your work will be found among the best that there is to offer of Barbadian art in the 20th and 21st centuries. I therefore take great pleasure in associating myself with this wonderful expression of creativity. And Drani has already said that it reflects an independence of thought and an independence of spirit and anyone who has had the opportunity to work with Carl, as I did when I asked her to come on at the IDC to help us with the position of Barbadian fashion, a project which unfortunately came to an early end on the change of government, um, would recognize that when we say she has an independence of thought and an independence of spirit, we mean that she has an independence of thought and an independence of spirit but it is displayed in a manner that cannot inspire malice in any way. And it is reflective of the best because you can only ask a creative genius to give what is true to themselves. If they don't walk the walk and talk the talk that is sincere, then the creative genius is simply not there. So we